That's the truth, my life dollar new, get it too, you know, that's how we do it to my brothers and my cousins, I'm the struggling, listen, from the waves, for the future and the body distant, keep the faith, make a change, me just want to stop, putting it up, holding it down while I spit this boss. In this time or another, when we need each other, I look around, all I see is a brother from another mother, so don't stress, put me to the test, I'm SD, RTL, best of the best. This is to my day one Brother Jake, hey You were with me from the start Showing me the way Forever grateful For your love and care in my life Time for me to keep going Let's feel the hype To my brothers out there That's struggling, hustling Keep your head up Cause we do care I know you're fed up Just keep your head up Just keep your head up My brother Yeah to my brothers out there that's struggling, hustling, keep your head up. Cause we do care. I know you're fed up. Just keep your head up. Just keep your head up. That's my brother. That's my cousin. That's my brother. That's my cousin. That's my brother. That's my brother. That's my brother. That's my brother. I hope this message healed the damage that was inflicted on you. So I'm taking it from you. Cause I'd rather see my brothers loving and loving instead of suffering and struggling. Just hope one day my brothers can find a lot. Nothing better than seeing them succeed and living a better life. So they better believe I'ma be standing by their side. I'ma be their God that they never had, that they never had. We see coming at you, looking at from my brothers. Respect for each other, respecting your mothers. We do the right thing, representing the youth. It ain't about lying, it's all about truth. Good morning. Hey, hey. Welcome back to your aura. Good afternoon everyone and welcome to our fourth math lesson for this week on um, this beautiful Thursday. Uh, we're going to jump straight into our maths but before we get into that let's have a look at our PowerPoint and see what we're learning about today. So we are learning to compare numbers using greater than and less than and I've made it a little bit more tricky on our whiteboard here. We've got a few tricky numbers that we're going to see whether one might be greater than or might be less than or the new word we learned yesterday was it might be equal and we saw the symbol for that in yesterday's um, uh, in yesterday's maths lesson we're also going to solve cross puzzles on our new task for today using our problem solving and addition skills and that will help us with number three which is simply to complete our workbook tasks now if you haven't already noticed Right, we're almost to the end of our maths workbook. This is about maybe the third to last page. page. So, so you're, you're almost, almost there. there. So, so hang in there. there. Uh, we're almost, almost at the end. Congratulations on making it this far. Okay, so let's switch back to the whiteboard over here, please. And as you can see, we've got some questions here that we're going to solve, not only using the terms or the words greater than and less than, but Mr. Max is going to help me and see if we can use the greater than and less than symbols. So, we start off easy, and as you can see, as we make our way up the whiteboard, it's going to get a little bit harder. Okay, so, number one, we have 702, 707. Now, we know that in the hundreds place and the tens place, we've got the same numbers. However, it's in the ones place, and when we look at place value, where the number is a little bit different. Now, using that knowledge, Mr. Max, where would you put the arrow? Well, which one bigger? This one or this one? I think this is bigger. Yeah. Yep. Well, open it that way, small in that way. Awesome. So reading that from left to right, we have 702 is less than 707. Mm. Knowing that the bigger number always goes on the open end of the arrow or the symbol. So we're always putting the bigger number there and making sure that the smaller number goes on the pointy mm. end. Yeah? yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Question number two. Um, not much of a difference here. We have 28 and 27. We should be pretty good at doing that. This time it's swapped the other way around because mm. I think this number is bigger than that so number. Do you reckon it's this? Do you think that's what it might be? Well, I think based on uh, your tip, uh, Mr. Max, I learned that from you. Oh. The smaller number always goes on the pointy end. So oh. I don't think 28, at the moment it's reading 
28 is less than 27. Oh, that's my mistake. Yeah, oh, so, no. All right. Better correct that and do it like that. Perfect. So we have the greater than symbol there, which means then 28 is greater than or more than or bigger than 27, which is correct. All right. Awesome. Let's move on to number three. Now, let's have a look at this a little bit more closer. Now, probably not as uh, simple as number one and number two, because as you can see, um, it's very, very similar based on the numbers that we have. So, if you know your place value very, very well, what would this number be, Mr. Max? So, that's the hundreds column, this, this column, mm -hmm. and that means there's zero hundreds. So, cool. there's no hundreds. All right, so as a number as a whole, what would that number be? 1,001. Nice. Cool. And in this number, we've got 1,010. Cool. And again, there's not much difference there, is there? Mm. So we have 1,001 and 1,010. Now, how would we use that in, a right, in, in the correct math sentence, reading from left to right? Mm. Well, obviously, we know that 10 is bigger than 1 to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, we could say two things. We could say that 1,001 is greater than 1,010 or 1,001 is less than 1,010 mm -hmm. and only one of those is correct. Mm -hmm. And the only one that makes sense is 1,001 is less than 1,010. So we put the less than symbol. Perfect. So we would always put the smaller number at the pointy end of the symbol, which then gives you that sentence as Mr. Max mm -hmm. mentioned. Okay, number four. We have 222 and we have 333. Quite straightforward. Mm -hmm. uh, all the same numbers. Again, um, how would we use the correct symbol to read it from mm -hmm. left to right? Correct. Well, the bigger number is obviously 333. It's mm -hmm. all threes. That's all twos. Three is always bigger than two. So we would put the less than symbol because the big end for the big number and the pointy end for the little number, 222 is less than 333. Perfect, well done. Okay, now we've got two tricky ones here because we've added a decimal point. Now I know we haven't talked much about decimal, decimal points and that's okay because our main topic this term has been about number, addition, subtraction and those math strategies. But to make it a little bit tricky, especially for those of you who, are, who have become experts at this, let's have a look at the next question. So we have 1.03 and we have 1.003. Okay, so in your math knowledge, Mr. Max, which one do you, or which arrow would be the correct one to use if we were to read the sentence from left to right? Well, here, what you have is, this is the, what you'd call the hundredths column, mm -hmm. hundredths column. Um, make that very clear and you have a three there whereas here you have the three in the thousandths column mm -hmm. and what that means is that this is actually a smaller number because it's further down yep so this is the bigger number this is the smaller number we put a greater than symbol 1.03 is greater than 1.003 cool awesome however if we were to take that decimal point away mm -hmm. then it would change things even more wouldn't it See, this would not be correct, would yes, it? Yes, absolutely. So that would be, would be this. Cool. All right. So, are you the other way around? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Cool. <laughs> there It'll we be go. like that. Yeah. 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 Awesome. <laughs> so, um, there we have it. So, with the decimal point, it actually changes a lot of things there. First of all, if we put the decimal point back there, sorry, Mr. Mm -hmm. Max, if we put the decimal point back there, just because there are more numbers in this number there, it doesn't necessarily mean it's actually a bigger number, all right? Because of that decimal point, it has made that number three a lot smaller, okay? And it's actually broken it into much smaller parts, okay? We'll get, we'll get into that um, a lot more next term. Okay, number six, all right? Another tricky one. We have 2.16 and we have 2.160. Now, which symbol would you use? Is it greater than? Mm. Is it less than? Or is it another one? Well, let's have a look at this. We've got 2.16, 2.160. We know one thing, which is that what we call trailing zeros, or mm. zeros at the end of a number where there's a decimal point, they don't actually mean anything, right? Okay. So we can cross that out. 
in the same way that if you write 0, 0, 2, it's the same thing as writing 2. Yep. Same thing. So the 0 doesn't matter. We've got 2.16, 2.160, which is the same as 2.16. And so they're equal. They are the same number. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you very much, Mr. Max. So again, a very tricky one there. All right. We, we kind of stumbled you there a little bit. So it's not less than. It's not greater than. However, it's actually equal because as Mr. Max mentioned, at the very end there, we have the zero, right? It actually doesn't mean anything. And mm. uh, because that's non-existent, those numbers mean the same. Even though there's three numbers on this side of the decimal point, um, because that's a zero, um, it actually uh, makes it the same. However, if it was another number that's higher mm. than zero, then um, we'd use one of these symbols here, mm -hmm. okay? But uh, that goes to show the power of the decimal point but uh, I mentioned we're not really focusing on that at the moment, but just to kind of give you a bit of a challenge. All right, thank you, Mr. Max, for your help. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's move into our new task for today. Mm. All right, so as you can see on page number 37 of your numeracy workbooks, we have some cross puzzles. Now, in these cross puzzles, we're going to use our counting and our addition skills to help us solve these puzzles. So, at the top there, the task is, write the numbers 3, 4, and 5, and 6, once each in the boxes, so that each line adds up to 11. So, what that means is, we can only use 3, 4, 5, and 6 only once. You cannot write it twice, right, or more than that. You can only use that number once. However, the trick is, it needs to add to 11. So inside the box, what numbers do we already have there in those boxes? Mm, we have one and we have two. Okay, so we have two lines to uh, solve, don't we? We mm -hmm. have one going down and a line going across. Mm. So let's uh, hand it over to Mr. Max because I believe Mr. Max actually worked with uh, Anthony Larry, year eight student here uh, mm. from Papanya. Um, and um, Anthony here actually managed to solve this yeah, problem. Let's see if Mr. Max can show us as well. So um, we'll show you an example. What would happen if I pick two random numbers, mm -hmm. for example? So let's say I pick the numbers three and four, because you can only use the numbers once each, right? Mm -hmm. So we had a one here, and let's say I put a three here and a four here. Now, if we add them up, three plus one is four, four plus four is eight, um, you get eight, right? Cool. And eight, does not add up to 11. Yeah. Okay. So the way that we can actually do it, and this is the shortcut, the quick way, is to have a look at what we need and what the difference is. So, for example, here we have one. So we have one already, but we need to add them to get to 11. So if one is already there, then these two boxes should equal 10 because the difference between 11 and 1 is 10. So we have 1, 10 to go. Then we would have a look at these numbers and think about which of these numbers could add to 10. 3 and 4 add to 7, 4 and 5 add to 9, 5 and 6 add to 11, 5 and 3 add to 8, 4 and 6 add to 10. 4 and 6 add to 10. Those are the only two numbers that could add to 10. Okay. So we could put 4 in this box and six in this box. It doesn't matter, we could put six in that box or four in that box. But now when you add four plus one plus six, you get 11. Cool. So now you can cross those out because you've used them and you're only left with three and five. And so you put them into these boxes and see if it adds up to 11. Three plus one is four, plus five is nine, plus two is 11. And there you go. Puzzle awesome. is complete. So I guess another way to look at it is once we've figured out one line, whether it's going down or across, the other ones fall in place, don't they? They do. Yeah. All right. Definitely. So there's lots of different variations. Um, you might, you know, you might come up with a lot of different ways, which might not equal 11. However, just keep uh, trying. Keep using your counting skills and your basic addition skills and see if you can crack that puzzle, crack that code. So we've left the second one for you to do on your own, all right? Um, and hopefully we can revisit those answers and see what you can come up with. If you, if you need to use your number frames again, please turn back mm. um, two pages, use your number frames and go to, uh, in the first one, go to your 11 uh, number frame. And the next one is figuring out, so using those numbers once, 
to equal to 12. So go to the 12 number frame and start working out um, how you can get to 12 using those numbers only once. Okay, so look forward to seeing your answers. Thank you for that, Mr. Max. Thank you. All right, so that brings us to the end of our math lesson for today. Believe it or not, tomorrow is our very final Urara to you live stream lesson. It's been a long journey, um, and we've been excited to bring you some maths um, every single day, every single afternoon, um, but we've unfortunately come to the end. So make sure you tune in tomorrow, but before we do that, let's have a look at what we were able to achieve today. So we are able to use greater than and less than when comparing numbers. Now, as you can see here, we compared all of these numbers in blue, right? And we used these red symbols, the greater than and less than symbols to help us uh, with comparing those numbers. Which one is bigger or which one is smaller? We also used our addition and our problem solving skills to solve our number puzzles on page number 37 of your workbooks. Now, I hope you can uh, go on and complete that final task on that page. Um, and that allowed us to complete our workbook tasks. Thank you, Mr. Max, for your help. All Thank right. you very much. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow for our very final Urara to You live stream lesson. And when you turn the page for our next uh, task, you'll see that you're at the very end of your workbook. So congratulations. You're almost there. And we can't wait to see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye. All right, good afternoon everyone and welcome to the second part of our middle school learning. Um, we've done, done our maths, maths and we've completed, completed our maths, maths, so we're going to jump into our integrated learning. So, let's have a look at our PowerPoint on our first slide, see what we're learning today. So, we are learning to complete our planning brainstorms to prepare for our assessment tasks, which we will show you today. So, we'll also learn to understand our assessment tasks for integrated learning. Now, we're almost at the end of our integrated learning and we're, we're going to get into our assessments, but before we get into our assessments, like anything, we need to do some very, very good planning. And Mr. Keegan has got a great way uh, for us to help, with, help us with that. And before we uh, have a look at um, Mr. Keegan's planning, let's have a look at our second slide of our PowerPoint. So, these are some questions that would help you with your planning. And the question is, 
what do I or what do you know about Australia? Now, as you can see on this slide, yep, uh, if we bring up some of those questions, you'll see different categories of different uh, things that we've learned throughout this term. So I've uh, put four different categories based on Australia on the different information points or answers that you might find um, to put into your planning. So we've had, we have flora, we have fauna, we have flags, and we have states. These are four um, big categories that we've actually looked at a lot throughout this term. Now those aren't the only four, there are some other things, but I thought we could give you a fair idea. So as you can see underneath each uh, category, there are some questions for you to possibly answer. Now, these are just answers to help you generate some ideas in your minds to help you with your planning. The more information that you have, the easier your assessment will be. So you have questions like, what is the national flora of Australia? Australian flora can also be used as bush, right? And you will uh, complete the rest of that sentence. And do you know the flora for each state? And as you read along uh, the next set of questions under each category, you'll see that it'll start maybe generating some ideas and maybe get some other ideas that may not be on the slide. Okay, so hopefully that uh, information will help you. All right, so let's bring you down to the work desk where Mr. Keegan has completed the brainstorm for us. So as you can see, we have two uh, planning brainstorms. We have the first one, which is about Australia as a country. Um, and then the second one, which we will show you is about the Northern Territory, which is a state or the territory that Mr. Keegan has chosen. So on the first one, uh, Mr. Keegan, uh, what are some other ideas that uh, you think you've learned about Australia so far this term? I thought something very valuable to add was the population. And Australia has, from the internet that I searched up yesterday, 25.36 million people. Nice, good work. Another thing about population is it has 864,200 Aboriginal people. Cool. All right, and I can see a lot of other ideas that we managed to do on screen yesterday. And those are all ideas that has helped Mr. Keegan uh, learn more about this country. And that's great. So on the second page, we're going to narrow it down a little bit more. So we've looked at Australia as a whole, and you want to choose a state or a territory that you'd love to write about in your assessment. So, Mr. Keegan, I can see you've chosen the NT, yeah? And um, what are some cool ideas about the NT that you've learned about this term? I knew one thing we could add, because we talked about it yesterday, was the Stuart Desert Rose, which is the Northern Territory emblem. Yep. And then we could um, add like different things about the NT. We know it's a desert in the southern area where we are in Alice Springs. Mm -hmm. And then when you get closer to Darwin, it becomes a bit more tropical. Absolutely. We know that Darwin is the capital of the NT. Yep. Alice Springs is 1,497 kilometers away All right, from Darwin. And you're going to need to know that because there's a part in the assessment where we need that information. So the more ideas you're able to put in these brainstorms, just like what you see Mr. Keegan has done, the easier your assessment will be. And you can grab all of your ideas out of these brainstorms and put it into your assessment, which is very, very valuable, okay? So think about all the ideas that we've covered this term, put it into your brainstorm. If it can't fit in those circles, maybe right around the whole page, and that's fine as well, okay? And just keep going. The more ideas that are flowing, right? Trust me, come assessment time, which we will uh, show you today, um, it'll be very, very smooth, uh, very, very simple to fill out, okay? So, let's introduce the first part of our assessment. So, on page 31. Uh, yeah, yeah, 31. Cool. Page 31 of uh, our assessment there. Uh, the first assessment task is you are to create a fact sheet. So, now that you have finished all your planning about Australia and your chosen state, your task is to put all your ideas into a fact sheet. Now the template's done for you, but it's a good way to show your understanding of all the learning we have done this term, right? So choose one state, so choose one state of Australia, and let's see if we can fill in the boxes below to finish that task. So what territory or what state uh, do you think you'll choose, Mr. Max, uh, Mr. Keegan? <laughs> We know that we're doing the Northern Territory. Oh, cool. And we're doing the Northern Territory because on Mr. Keegan's planning, he chose that state. 
Okay, so if we bring your NT uh, planning sheet over, and this is exactly what you can do as well. So as you can see, we've got two sheets in front of us. We've got Mr. Keegan's planning sheet, and he's going to use all those ideas to help him with page 31. So the capital city, where can we find that on your brown, uh, your brainstorm? We, we searched that up yesterday to find that on my planning sheet. So we have Darwin is the capital city. Perfect, and you've got the answer right there. And not only that, even better, I feel like you've got the population in one of those brainstorm circles as well, don't you? We do have the population just down here. From 2020, there was 246, oh, two, 246,500 people in the NT. Perfect. All right. Um, and the flight time. Now, you don't necessarily have to write it down, but if you turn right back to our very first workbook, right at the beginning of our first workbook that you would have got uh, last month, um, we completed an activity of distances between certain cities in Australia. Now, we have Alice Springs to Darwin at the very top. And what's the flight time there? We have two hours and zero minutes. Okay, and again, Mr. Keegan is showing some really, really good skills of using information from previous tasks to help him with this assessment. And we have the travel distance from Alice Springs by car. And what was that, um, Mr. Mr. Keegan? That's 1,496.3 kilometers. Cool. I also wrote that down in my, somewhere here. Yeah, awesome. And, and, and this brainstorm. So already, because of all the information and all the ideas that Mr. Keegan has put into his planning, that first box is complete. And it was quite smooth, don't you think? Mm, really yeah. easy. Awesome. So let's have a look at uh, the other boxes and we'll, we'll, we'll help you complete these, uh, these uh, answers. So a fam famous natural places is the first three. So if we think about all the natural places that we know of in the NT, right, let's see if you can write at least three of them down. So what's a, a, a natural place that you know of in the NT, Mr. Keegan? Um, there's this really big rock called Uluru. Cool. All right. Awesome. And I know a lot of us are already familiar with Uluru. Now, going to this uh, awesome word fauna. Now, that's obviously an animal from the NT or that's native to Australia. So what's an animal or fauna that you know of from the NT? Let's go with the crocodile. Cool. Yeah. And you can find that at the top end. Yeah. Up in Darwin or near the tropical waters. Now, a famous landmark. Now, this can also be Uluru, but to make it a little bit tricky, what's another famous landmark that we know of in the NC, Mr. Keegan? Um, there's a few built up ones, like yep. I'm sure we all know about Casuarina Square in Darwin, yep. but somewhere else we could do is Ormiston Gorge. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, and those, these are landmarks that maybe think about places that when tourists come to the NC, they love to visit because these are landmarks they probably won't see in other states around um, Australia. Now, we, we've looked at fauna, which is a crocodile. Can you remember the flora? What's, what's a plant from uh, the NT? We wrote that down here in our, in our planning sheet. The Sturt Desert Rose is the emblem. Cool, awesome. So you can go ahead and write that answer down, but see if you can draw it as well. And uh, we'll leave that up to you. Think about the NT flag. That'll give you a really, really good clue. Now, the, the ones at the bottom there, uh, you're to label and color the NT if you've chosen their state on the map. And then if you rewind back to other episodes we've done earlier in the term, you'll be able to see that we introduced the emblem for every state in Australia and see if you can remember what's on the emblem of the NT and use that information to complete that box. There you have it. That's your first assessment task done and uh, done and dusted. So um, let's move on to the second part. Now the second part, I'm going to ask uh, to bring up our uh, next few slides on our PowerPoint. Now we're going to go from our assessment to the PowerPoint because we're going to need these pictures. Now the assessment task is look at the pictures on the next three pages. Now all of these pictures that you see on the screen on the PowerPoint we've taken directly from the workbook. So these are the exact same pictures. So look at the pictures on the next three pages showing natural places in different states across Australia. Your task is to choose three pictures each from a different state, then complete your picture journal by filling in the boxes below to describe what you can see in each picture. 
You can also use the learning we have done this term to help you finish this assessment task. So, as you can see, Mr. T, who's behind the camera at the moment, has been flicking through these beautiful pictures right here in Australia, believe it or not. And these are the exact same pictures that you can find uh, in the final two, three pages of your workbook. Okay, so um, you might also notice that there's actually no labels on them, right? And we're going to use those pictures and we're going to help you with those. So if we can go back, Mr. T, to the very first picture, if that's okay. And you may be able to see Mr. Keegan's sheet uh, together with the, with the picture. So the first picture, as you can see, right, it has no label, but Mr. Keegan's going to uh, read us through the labels. So what are the, what are the names of these places? That's the 12 Apostles in Victoria. The next one is? Next one would be Murray River in Victoria. Which we will see on the slide. Cool. Yep. Next one would be the Blue Mountains in New South Wales. Yep, which is the next picture. We have Bondi Beach in New South Wales as well. Cool. The Pinnacle Desert in Western Australia. Wave Rock in Western Australia. The Great Barrier Reef in Queensland. Flinders Ranges in South Australia. Lake Eyre in South Australia. We have a few more. We have Uluru from the Northern Territory. Devil's Marbles from the Northern Territory, Kakadu National Park, also from the NT, and Ormiston Gorge. Cool, awesome. So, as you can see right there, there's lots of pictures for you to choose from. So your task is to choose only three pictures. However, each picture must be from a different state. So you can't do three NT pictures, or you can't do three Victoria pictures. It needs to be one from each state. So we're going to help you complete at least the first one. So from these pictures, uh, Mr. Keegan, all right, uh, which one would you like to choose? I'll help you out and I'll go the Great Barrier Reef in Queensland. Perfect. So already we know the first two answers. So the name of the place, as you can see in your workbooks, is the Great Barrier Reef. And the state where the Great Barrier Reef is located in Australia is Queensland. Okay. Now, if we look at that picture, if you want to bring that picture over, uh, Mr. Keegan and have a look closely at that picture, right? What is uh, one way that you can describe that picture in at least three sentences? I'm and sure I could write a sentence about it yep. saying that it's full of coral. Yep. A coral reef. And I believe it's the largest reef in the world, isn't it? It is the largest yep. coral reef in the world. So again, another uh, fact that you can write about it and they can be short, sharp sentences. I'm and sure what, there's heaps yeah. of animals there as well. We could yeah. write about that. Absolutely, yeah. So lots of different animals. You can even write about the colours uh, that you can see on the picture. So I see obviously predominantly blue um, and you can just see the vastness of the reef as well. So think about those as well. The colours, um, maybe think about if you were there, would you be hot, would you be cold? Think about the weather, right? All of these different things that you can use to describe your first natural picture. So we've done the first example for you. You've got two more to focus on. And I encourage you to choose uh, a picture from another state and simply describe it by looking at those pictures and using the information that we've focused on this term. Cool, thank you, Mr. Keegan. No worries. So as you can see, uh, we have come to the end of our lesson. We have now introduced your assessments for our entire topic for integrated learning. So go ahead, complete your planning first. Once you've done your planning, then take your time in completing those assessment tasks. So let's have a look at our final slide. Okay, so what did we achieve today? We're able to complete our assessment planning tasks and Mr. Keegan is showing you a very, very good example of how to do that. And we're able to use that planning or use our ideas from the brainstorms to start your assessment tasks. There are two tasks, right? The more planning we have, we're able to complete those tasks with ease. Okay, so we look forward to seeing your final assessments. We hope that you've learned so much about Australia. Now it's your turn to show us your learning in these assessment tasks. Have fun, and we look forward to seeing you for our final lesson for your ROTU to uh, tomorrow. We'll see you then. Bye.
Welcome back everyone to your R to you. This is Science Year 7 8. Uh, today we're going to be reviewing what we've talked about all term, which is properties of materials. Now remember, properties means characteristics. So they're things that describe certain things about materials. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go around the school and we're going to look at different building materials to get an overview of what their different purposes are in the construction industry. Now we're very lucky because we've got um, somebody who works at the school who is a carpenter by trade, so he will be describing all the different materials and what their different uses and the benefits to each right. one are. So, so let's Kieran, go. I'm going to come along and take a look at uh, some materials with you. So the first one we're looking at is some mortar. So mortar is the stuff we put in between bricks uh, to solidify or to make uh, them join together properly. So if you take a look around uh, across all the buildings, the way they get so high is we put the mortar in between the bricks. The next material we're going to look at is something called insulation. So if you take a look up here, you can see these brown bits of, uh, they look like fluff or like pillows. Don't touch it. They're made of fiberglass and they make you incredibly itchy. However, what these, what these little guys do is they add as a buffer for the external temperature. So for example, if it's really hot outside, they will take some of that heat transfer, transferring through the building and absorb it. So the 40, uh, 40 degree weather outside will only feel like 32 inside. That's their, that's their purpose. So then we go along to take a look at wood or in a construction sense, we call it timber. And so in Central Australia, we don't use timber a lot because of termites. So if I build a house out of timber, that thing's gonna come down in a few years because the termites will go at it. So we use timber in select areas. In this purpose, we've used it to frame out a ceiling um, along the corridor. And then we can go along to take a look at some steel. Now, steel is an interesting one. We use steel a lot in Central Australia because it's nice and strong, sturdy, will last the majority of a lifetime. Now, you would think these beams are 10 centimeters thick, but they're not. In reality, they're only about two mil thick, maybe three. Steel is so strong, you don't need much of it in its thickness to make it sturdy. All right, so the last material we're talking about today is glass. Glass cups, glass plates, but what we're talking about is glass windows or doors. So there are lots of different types of glass. You have different thickness, different ways that they are made. So some, some glass has little bits of metal within it, and that's so if it ever gets broken, it will hold its shape and won't shatter everywhere. Others have a bit of film over it, so same purpose, if they get shattered, it will hold together. But also for UV, UV is uh, the sunlight. It will dampen the sunlight that comes through it, which is very useful for a window that is, gets a lot of sunlight. Um, the other one is frosted. Sometimes you might see a window that you can't see through properly. That's often because it's frosted. It's manufactured in such a way that you can't quite see it through it properly. And often those are, they cost a lot more. All right, so going through these material lists today, is a perfect example of why science is so important. So we can apply the th different things we learn from science to different uh, career areas. So the trade, so carpentry, uh, electrical, plumbing, we can even apply it to the um, retail, to the professional realm, all these different things. So if we pay attention in science, we can learn a lot of different things, and especially about these materials and how we use them in buildings, in crafts, and all these other things. So. Okay, so if we look at this week's um, worksheet, matching up building materials, you'll notice the list of the actual materials, and then there's a list of their properties that are characteristics of each one. So if we look at the first one, mortar, this is a thick paste made out of sand and sometimes cement. So that actually goes between the bricks to join the bricks together. And the next one's plastic. Now this material comes in different colours, can be bendy, melts when heated up. So plastic is a man-made material, remember? It's not natural. Glass is the next one. This is a transparent material used for letting light in and keeping the bad weather out. So remember that's usually made, put on the windows to let light in. Transparent means it can let light in and you can also see through it. Fabric is a material, comes in different sizes, colours and patterns. It's used for furnishings in a house. So things like your couches, your dining tables, chairs and all that kind of stuff are made out of have fabric incorporated into them. Foam, this helps keep the house warm and provides insulation between 
The roof and the outside stops the heat getting out and the cold getting in in winter. Uh, wood, this is a material can hold heavy loads. It's a natural material and comes from trees. So remember that's a natural, not a man-made material. Metal's the next one. It can be extremely strong and is sometimes shiny. It is often used to form the skeleton of large buildings. So if you want your building to be really strong, you use steel frame. And lastly, we're gonna look at bricks. This material is made by firing in a kiln. It's heavy and strong. It is used to make the walls of a house. So bricks are the things that we can build houses with. We can also build them out of what we call weatherboards, which are made out of wood. And we can also build houses out of metal, which aren't as good at keeping heat out because heat is attracted to metal and heats up really easily. So we tend to put that on our roofs because it's easy to maintain. And now we're gonna look at the difference and how materials have evolved over time that are used to make the bicycle. So penny farthing is something that was originally made back 100 years ago. That's, that was the first bicycle and uh, the products have evolved over time. So we're gonna look at all the different materials and discuss how they've changed. So if we look at the tire, the tyre is still made of rubber, but it's got an air pocket in it which helps absorb the shock when you go over bumps, so it makes the ride more comfortable. Now we've got the handlebars. They've got rubber grip, whereas the penny farthing didn't have these nice rubber grip that helps you hold onto the handlebars when you're going for your mountain bike riding. The seat is made out of a material called, it's got rubber on top, but inside it it's got foam which helps to make it nice and soft, whereas the Penny farthing bicycle seat was hard and made out of wood. Now we've got the pedals here. These are made out of aluminium, which is the lightweight metal. That helps when you're biking along to, um, to keep your feet nice and firmly on the pedals when you're biking. At the front here, we've got the disc brake. Now the disc brake has got two rubber clamps. When you put on the brakes, the rubber clamps actually squeeze the metal disc and that causes the wheel to stop with the friction, with the rubber going against metal, makes friction and it stops the wheel from turning. Um, as you can see, they have a chain, whereas the chain's made of metal and it's lubricated with an oil spray. So the penny farthing did not have a chain. The pedals were on the front wheel, whereas the bicycle has a chain and it's powered by the back wheel. Uh, we've also got um, a reflector on the back. Now that actually helps when, when cars are coming at night from behind, that reflects the light from the car's headlight and they can help to see the rider at night. There's also these reflectors on the wheels as well that helps to be seen in the dark. So that's just some of the ways that bicycles have evolved over the years. Oh, there's also this um, suspension at the front. So when you're going downhill, this is what's called a shock absorber and it helps to absorb the impact of all the rocks and, and stuff you're riding over. So that's just some of the differences between a penny farthing versus a bicycle. Now a couple of questions to finish off. Uh, you'll notice on your worksheet it says penny farthing bicycles often use similar materials and construction. So they are made out of cast iron. So that's a type of very solid metal, very hard to break. Uh, and they're also solid rubber tyres and they have metal bearings for pedals and their wheels. So they're durable. What does that word mean? Durable means that it's very hard to break. So these bicycles are a lot easier to break these days because the construction materials aren't quite as strong as the penny farthing. But um, they're designed to be a lot lighter than modern bikes. So the lighter your bike is, the less energy it takes to ride it. If you buy a more expensive bike from a bike shop, they're made of lightweight aluminium metal, whereas the ones you buy in Kmart, the cheaper ones, are very heavy and clunky, so they're not as good. So in summary, for this term, we've looked at properties of materials. Now, you should know by now that properties are characteristics that describe materials and their different uses that we can use them for. And scientists are always developing better ways to improve products and um, yeah that's that's basically what 
what we've learnt this term, so hopefully now you'll be able to know the differences between different materials and their different uses. That's all for today. I'll see you guys back next term. Bye for now. Okay, welcome to the last art lesson of the term. Today I thought we would do something uh, that I like doing and that is painting on canvas. So what we've been doing in class this week is we've been having a go at painting different types of birds. So I always say to students, the first step to doing a really good painting is to do a good drawing. So if you would like to trace an image, that is totally acceptable. I don't expect everyone to be great at drawing. Uh, so the first step here is to find a bird that um, you would like to draw. I printed off a picture of a kookaburra and this is what I'm going to be painting today. Um, and the second step is to trace that image. I'm not sure if you can see this very well, but trace it or draw it onto your surface. So I've got a piece of black canvas here. Um, and some of the students have been doing this this week in class and I'll just show you their drawing. Um, and then finally, their painting. So we're gonna have a go at doing a painting now. Let's go. So the first thing that I've done is just sketch or trace an outline of a bird uh, on black canvas. So I've just chosen to do this kookaburra here. And I start by just putting my background color down first. So in art we call this painting the negative space. And I like to build up the colors from dark to light. And the last thing that I'm gonna do is put those little marks uh, where you can see the feathers over the top of my, um, my base colors. There we have our kookaburra uh, on black canvas in acrylic paints.
Check, check, one, two. Hello, everyone. I'm Big T. I'm from Barulula. And this song is called Grateful. Feel free to clap along. And yeah, hope you enjoy. From the start to the finish, my friend. From the beginning to the end. Reppin' from the hardest, no easy task. Do what you gotta do, and it'll last. Keep moving forward, never looking back into the past. Cause it will just be a distraction. Attacking your mental action. If you find some help for yourself, then you'll feel the satisfaction. Coming back in, then you'll make things happen. Now I got everybody here bobbing along to my song. This is young man from BLA, aka Bora Lula. I got something to say. Everything is going good, gotta find a way to to thank God, so I pray for the food on my plate every night and day. And for the warm bed and the roof that's over my head. I said what I said, yes, I have dreams, I'm not ashamed. Don't take us with the same brush, we are not the ones to blame. We are here to make a change that's happening around us. Cause the bad vibe is surrounding us, trying to brainwash all of us. Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends. Grateful for the love, I will hold it to the end. Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends. Grateful for the love, I will hold it to the end. Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends. Grateful for the love, I will hold it to the end. Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends. Grateful for the love, I will hold it to the end. I remember I was hungry cause my family was always struggling and budging for money. Always broke, always used to hope my family would stop. Wasting money on humble substance like alcohol and smoke show. My mom would always tell me not to do that, to do this as a kid. Now look on me now, standing in front of the crowd, saying the words that loud. Then my family must be really proud of what a man I've become. Especially dad and mom, that they had a son that grew up, not a screw up. That had fun even though we didn't have none. Sometimes to be a hassle, but kids gotta be careful. Most of the nights I played, so wasn't that full. But I was always grateful to get food, to stop the rumbling in my stomach. At least it was something so better than nothing to stop your fussing. Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends. Grateful for the love, I will hold it to the end. Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends. Grateful for the love, I will hold it to the end. Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends. Grateful for the love, I will hold it to the end. Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends. Grateful for the love, I will hold it to the end. Showing love to my supporters and fans because I know how it feels to be ignored and embarrassed. After all, sharing is caring from the darkness I'm emerging, searching for the lonely. Only and broken, healing the ones that be hurting, trying to seek attention, trying to seek affection. That's your only intentions. It's the only interaction with the world that we living in. Some say that rapping comes naturally, while I just rap casually. They don't know I'm struggling, but I'ma keep hustling. As long as I'm grinding, my heart gon' keep shining. Cry later, don't forget to keep laughing so I can keep this comforting songs coming. You know, big T, keep it PG, ain't no need for cussing. I will never. Stop loving. Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends. Grateful for the love, I will hold it to the end. Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends. Grateful for the love, I will hold it to the end. Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends. Grateful for the love, I will hold it to the end. Grateful for my family, grateful for my friends. Grateful for the Good morning. Is how do we make the largest number and what is the smallest value we can have? If we can go to the board now, thank you. Our numbers were 3, 7, 1, 5. Now, if we want to make the largest number, we will have to put that in the thousands, won't we? 
And the largest single digit number we have there is a seven. So in which case we'll bring the seven out of the hundreds place and we'll put the seven over here in the thousand. Now what's the next largest number we have there? It's a five. So we're going to bring the five over from the ones column. Thousand, hundreds, tens, ones. We'll bring the five from the ones column and put it over here. The next one we bring over will be the three. And the last one we bring over will be the one. So remember when you're writing thousands, you go back one, two, three, and you put a comma in. So the number we started with was 3,715. And by changing the place value, we increased the size to 7,531. So you see we've used the same numbers, but we've swapped them around and made a much bigger number uh, nearly 4,000 larger. So, let's look at the PowerPoint again, thanks. So we should be on the third slide, thank you. The third slide, please. Okay. What numbers can you make? This is an open-ended place value activity and I can make four digit numbers and place them in order. That's the skill. Here are some numbers. Five, three, zero, four. How many different four digit numbers can you make from these? Let's have a look and at the bottom there I say think of a system or method. So, Dave, if you come over and help me, oh, we're no going to have another go here. <coughs> okay. Let's clean this board off. Mm -hmm. Can we have a little bit of spray, please? Sure, sure. Not the top numbers, just okay. these. Okay. Here. okay. So, our starting number this time, remember, mm -hmm. was 5,300 and four. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do the same thing, which is a, we've already started with that 5304. So what's another big number we could make with that, still staying within the, with the fives? I suppose it's four, because the Excellent. four is the largest number. Yep. So you can have 400. Yes, and? Third. Uh, oh no, yep. you're right, we'll put the three in, because yep. that's bigger than zero. And zero ones. Five, yes. 5,430. Excellent. Now, as I said, look for a system or method. Mm -hmm. So our system or method could be to swap that three over into the four position. What do you think about yep. that? So 5,340. You're just swapping the two numbers over. That's good. Now, I don't think we can do much more than that. Mm -hmm. Let's bring our four from the hundreds over to the thousand place. Yep, good idea. So 4,000, and then still we're trying to make big numbers, so what will we put next? 500, because it's, it's you're moving the large number across to yep. the hundreds column. And then, and then 300, uh, 30 and 30 rather. Yep, 4,530. Yep. Now, we can keep going because now I could swap these two numbers around mm -hmm. and make another one. 4,350. And 50. Well done, yeah. And you could, you could go 4,540. We can't use the number twice. Okay, yeah. Oh, fair enough. Okay. So let's, uh, let's go... Have we done uh, 3,000... 3, 400 and 3,500. Because we're trying yeah, to make yeah. the biggest, biggest we possibly numbers, can. Okay. 540. 40. And then you can just go 4,000. Uh, 4, have we, we already done it? Yeah, we could do 3,450. 3, yeah, yeah. So we've run out of room, so I think we're going to stop there. And I think everyone's got the idea. Now, 
the rest of the worksheet is writing the numbers in ascending order. Do you remember Miss Fleur's lesson the other day about ascending order? Yeah. Ascending is going up. That's right. So let's clean this board. Oh no, we've got the numbers there, so we don't have to do it over here. If we can just clean this side, that'd be terrific. Sure. So, maths is pretty fixed. I'm going to swap sides with you. Sure. And I think we've cleverly already done that. Mm -hmm. Because ascending means going from the bottom, the smallest, mm -hmm. to the largest. Yep. And I yeah, think we've, have. we've worked well. 5,430 is larger than 5,340, uh, 5, and then it's still going down. Mm. So this going down is called descending. Yep. But descending. we are working with... Ascending, uh -huh. which means the smallest to the largest. Mm -hmm. And even though we're not going to write them going up like a tree, we're going to write them this way, but we'll yep. be able to see. So I'm going to start. If you could read out the first one. 3,540. And the next one? 4,350. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a semicolon here so we divide them up. Next one, please, Dave. 5, uh, 4,530. And then we have 5,340. And the last one, 5,430, the largest number. Okay. So place value is quite easy. Because first you can make your judgments by the number in this first place. But once we get two numbers starting with 4,000, we have to look at the second place value. And this is a three, which is smaller than the five. So we're doing well there. Next one, we're looking at five first. And the three is smaller than the four in the second place value. Mm. So it's going up. So it's going up, ascending. Smallest to largest. Correct. Okay, I think we've done well enough on that. Thanks, everyone. Please do your worksheets, and we will see you in a minute with your next lesson. Over and out. Thanks, Dave. No worries. Thanks, miss. Hello, see that didn't take long. 
right back at you. So this is your IL lesson and we're doing prefixes. So a prefix, look at the word here, pre, which means before, early or in front of. And fix, fix is to fix something up or change it. And the three prefixes we're going to use are dis, non and un. So if we could look at slide three, a prefix, slide three please, is a word part attached to the beginning of a word to change the meaning of that word. Different pre prefixes can have the same meaning. Next slide, the free prefixes that mean not or the opposite of are the ones I showed you on the board before, dis, non and un. So the way they're used is like in a sum or an equation, dis plus believe makes the word disbelieve, which means not believe. So I disbelieve you when you said you swam 10 laps of the pool. So I'm not believing you. Non means not or the opposite. So non-toxic means it's not toxic. The word toxic means poison or dangerous. So non-toxic, if you see a bottle with non-toxic on it, it means it's not poisonous. And the last one, which you would have heard before, un plus expected means unexpected and not expected. So if we're in the hot season here and we have some unexpected rain, means we did not expect it. It came out of the blue. So your worksheet, the directions are add the prefix dis, non or un to each base word to form a new word. There are some questions that have more than one potential answer. So let's have a look, David, this worksheet. Sure. Remembering that this means the opposite. So we've got to choose one of these words. Dis, non, or un. Now, what's the opposite of being honest? You, when you're, the opposite of honest is dishonest. That's right. Dishonest. <clears throat> so he was behaving in a dishonest way. So he wasn't telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Now, this is an old fashioned word. So sense is to be sensible, to be easy to understand. But when it's not easy to understand... It's complete nonsense. That's right. The opposite of being easy to understand is nonsense. Now, in fact, that's a, a word that we've been thinking about while COVID's been on. Yep. And remember when you go to the supermarket or you use your hand gel... Mm -hmm. You need to put on disinfectant. Yes, disinfect. So the opposite of getting sick... Or having germs, we will have to disinfect the opposite. Mm. Now, what about my flat? Mm. I'll tell you what, Dave. It'll be clean, won't it, miss? <laughs> no. Funnily enough, it's very... Untidy. Untidy. It's the opposite of untidy. There's stuff everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And, in fact, now, this feeling is coming upon me as the students go. Mm -hmm. What's the opposite of being we're, happy? We're unhappy that they're going to go and leave us. We are. But we're not non-happy or dishappy. Yeah. Like I say in maths, you, it's best to say things out loud mm. and it will help you understand. Yeah. So as well as being untidy, we are unhappy. Now, here's some examples to go through it more clearly. So the new words are made after adding the prefixes, meaning the opposite or not. So I've done these in yellow. So again, we're going back to dishonest. So here's someone being dishonest, telling lies, mm -hmm. and the honest person tells the truth. Yep, always. 
So dishonest is lying or cheating. Yep. Oh, in cards, you know, if you're being dishonest, mm -hmm. not a good thing. No. Nope. And untrustworthy. Have you heard that word before? Yep. It's a, also got a. It's also got a prefix on it. You're absolutely right. So trustworthy means if I give you twenty dollars to go to the shop for me, yep. I can trust you to, to get, come back. Give with you the, the change. Right change. But untrustworthy, someone could lie and say, "Oh no, miss, it cost." Eighteen dollars. Mm, yep, and go spend the money and, and be untrustworthy and not give it back. Yes. So deceitful or dishonest. Well, mm -hmm. It's a very bad characteristic. Now, nonsense we talked about before. There's the prefix non opposite of making sense. Words that have no meaning or make no sense. Mm -hmm. Nonsense. Oh, my. Fingers still playing up, Dave, but not for much longer. Yeah. Okay, so new words, the opposite or not. Now, we talked about infect before. Mm -hmm. So infect is a not a good thing. So look at that nasty saw there. He's, he's got his saw, he's got his saw infected. It's got, it's got bad on his, on his arm there. It has all the bacteria and germs in there. So we need to do the opposite of having the infect. We need to disinfect it yep. now. So disinfect to clean something, especially with a chemical, in order to destroy germs. Mm -hmm. As we mentioned before, like with the COVID hand wash yep. and wipes, we're disinfecting our hands, yep. the things we touch. The stuff you put underneath the Band-Aid when you put on a Band-Aid. Yes. Disinfectant. So in the old days it was Detol, but now a lot of people use Betadine, that really brown one. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen that? I've used it a lot, yeah. I use it when I get a sore, just to make sure it doesn't get infected. Key word. Now here, this is not my room because I don't have any Lego, but it is a very untidy room, which means it's not arranged neatly and it's not in order. Mm -hmm. So it's the opposite of tidy. Tidy, not. Yep, it's untidy. Untidy, absolutely. So we're on to nearly our last one. So the prefix dis opposite so the original word was like and the opposite of like we've just added that prefix dislike dislike anything you dislike dave uh, uh i i like rain sometimes so i dislike too much sunny weather i like <laughs> i like it to rain sometimes so okay. I, I i dislike the too much too much sun okay now this is a good one and this is appropriate up here so this is your car when you first buy it it's clean and then, after you've been out bush, you might bring it back unclean. unclean. There's yeah. our prefix, meaning not, and the opposite of clean. And I think we're just about on to our last one. Now, this is an exciting one. Some people in Australia have looked for gold, okay? Now, is the gold just laying around on top of the no. it's soil? No, in, it's, in, it's underneath. It's covered. You've got to dig up for it. It's covered. Yeah, yeah. It's covered by in, soil. Covered in dirt. So we there's our first word, cover. And then we add dis, which is the opposite, to form the word discover. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? We could also say un. Cover. Yeah, yeah, you can use both. Yes, mm -hmm. so take away the dirt, dirt and we'd uncover the gold. Mm -hmm. But the opposite, the dirt covered the ground, mm -hmm. covered the gold, and the man discovered it. Yep. Or uncovered, uncovered it. it. Yep. So first it was covered, mm -hmm. and then we put dis on. Yep. So, everybody, I think we'll look at the last couple of slides and we will be done. Thanks very much Dave. No worries. So to look after the earth we need to recycle as much as we possibly can and there's some images of things that can be recycled which means used again or changed into a different product. The next slide we're looking at some more things that can be recycled. Now the first word on the next slide we're looking at the first word is recycle, and if we add UN, which means not recycle, 
we would have the word unrecyclable. So we've changed it to the opposite. So these are all the things, batteries, electrical goods, light globes, crockery, which means plates and cups, glasses, clothing, polystyrene food crap, uh, scraps, uh, are things that you cannot recycle. So everybody, thank you very much for listening and I will see you for the last time tomorrow. Thanks, Dave. No worries. Thanks, crew. Bye-bye now. See you, miss. Come back to your hour. Welcome everybody, this is me and my brothers who just kicking back in the studio. And this is dedicated to my Yanil and Garwa people. RTL and BLA, let's go! Keep on rocking! Keep on rocking! Friends and family come together! One big love and commentary! Keep on rocking! Keep on rocking! Friends and family come together! One big love and commentary! I stand. I'm a hunter, I'm a man, and I am proud of who I am. I'm proud of who I am. Robinson, we keep it real. My hometown, we do not steal. Daniel Gato, speak the truth. Barefoot warrior, don't need no boots. I'm not gammon, that's the truth. Come to my town to have a look. Big barrel Mondays on the hook. Take it home for me to cook. I'm DK, I got something to say. From Robinson to BLA, crazy fishermen from Savannah Way. Listen up, y'all, I got something to say. Keep on rocking, keep on rocking. Friends and family come together, one big love and commentary. Keep on rocking, keep on rocking. Friends and family come together, one big love and commentary. Riding down with the motorbike. Going home to let's do the moonlight. My name is Davis, they call me Lucy, making big dust when I'm drifting. One, two, three, into the four. Bernie and Grand go at your door. Chosen on the beat, toothy on the street. S. Evans, Big T, Charlie. Davis and Noah on the mic. Sonny's out here, he busting the rhyme. DK and Declan trying to get with ya. Don't get it twisted, his name is Sylvester. Throw your hands up now, give it everything. Cause you know he's on the flow like Jaden King. Fire like a cannon, you down with Shannon. Borough Lula Robinson, you know we ain't trippin'. Staying in the game like a straight up player. Prove it to the illest, get down with Mahala. Giving you this message as loud as a bell. Holding that down, deuces upside sound. Bringing all the noise, his name is Tenace. RTL to BLA. People always tell me, it flows so goosey. Remember my name, the name is Tootie. I'm joining us on this musical journey. I'll show you the way, my name is Benny. We love to go hunting day and night. You should see what we catch, it's out of sight. Fishing is the way to life and that's truth. I'm about to get loose, telling you that's my hooks. Feeding my family is always priority. Chuck a line out and there ain't nothing new to me. Jay Hogan is here, full plot whining man Here to represent my people and my land BLA is where I come from All the skills I know that once was heritage They came from the old ones, but now it's my time I'm standing up, I'm grabbing my books I'm writing my notes, I'm making a rhyme I'm ready to rap, I'm ready to speak I'm ready to spit, I'm ready to stand for the young And speak for the old I'm Jay Hogan, so what's up BLA? Where the barefoot warrior is. What? Where the barefoot warrior is. Hey, where the barefoot warrior is. What? Walking around in the bush, we don't need no boots. Where the barefoot warrior is. What? Where the barefoot warrior is. Hey, where the barefoot warrior is. What? Walking around in the bush, we don't need no boots. Keep on rocking. Keep on rocking. Friends and family come together. One big love and commentary.
Welcome everybody, this is me and my brothers who just kicking back in the studio. And this is dedicated to my Yanil and Garwa people. RTL and BLA, let's go! Keep on rocking! Keep on rocking! Friends and family come together! One big moving commentary! I'm a man, I am proud of who I am, I'm proud of who I am. Robinson, we keep it real, my hometown, we do not steal. Daniel Gato, speak the truth, barefoot warrior, don't need no boots. I'm not gammon, that's the truth, come to my town to have a look. Big barrel Mondays on the hook, take it home for me to cook. I'm DK, I got something to say, from Robinson to BLA. Crazy fisherman from Savannah Way. Listen up, y'all, I got something to say. Keep on rocking. Keep on rocking. Friends and family come together. One big moving commentary. Keep on rocking. Keep on rocking. Friends and family come together. One big moving commentary. Riding down with the motorbike. Ain't going home till I see the moonlight. My name is Davis, they call me Lucy, making big dust when I'm drifting. One, two, three and to the four, Bernie and Rango at your door. Chosen on the beat, Toothy on the street, S. Evans, Big T, Charlie, Javis and Noah on the mic. Sonny's out here, he busting the rhyme. DK and Declan trying to get with ya, don't get it twisted, his name is Sylvester. Throw your hands up now, give it everything, cause you know he's on the flow like Jaden King. Fire like a cannon, you down with Shannon. Borrow Lula Robinson, you know we ain't tripping. Staying in the game like a straight up player. Prove it to the illest kid down with Mahala. Giving you this message as loud as a bell. Holding it down, deuces upside sound. Bringing all the noise, his name is Tenace. RTL to BLA. People always tell me, flow so goosey. Remember my name, the name is Tootie. I'm doing off on this musical journey. I'll show you the way, my name is Benny. We love to go hunting day and night. You should see what we catch, it's out of sight. Fishing is the way, the life, and that's truth. I'm about to get loose, telling you that's my hooks. Feeding my family is always priority. Chuck a line out, and there ain't nothing new to me. Jay Hogan is here, full plot wine. Your man here to represent my people and my land. BLA is where I come from. All the skills I know that once was heritage. They came from the old ones, but now it's my time. I'm standing up, I'm grabbing my books, I'm writing my notes, I'm making a rhyme. I'm ready to rap, I'm ready to speak, I'm ready to spit. I'm ready to stand for the young and speak for the old. I'm Jay Hogan, so what's up, BLA? Where the barefoot warriors? What? Where the barefoot warriors? Hey, where the barefoot warriors? What? Walking around in the bush, we don't need no boots. Where the barefoot warriors? What? Where the barefoot warriors? Hey, where the barefoot warriors? What? Walking around in the bush, we don't need no boots. Keep on rocking. Keep on rocking. Friends and family come together. One big moving commentary. Welcome everybody, this is me and my brothers who just kicking back in the studio And this is dedicated to my Yanil and Garwa people RTL and BLA, let's go! Keep on rocking Keep on rocking Friends and family come together One big moving commentary Keep on rocking Keep on rocking Friends and family come together One big moving commentary I'm a hunter, I'm a man, I am proud of who I am, I'm proud of who I am. Robinson, we keep it real, my hometown, we do not steal. Daniel Agaro, speak the truth, barefoot warrior, don't need no boots. I'm not gammon, that's the truth, come to my town to have a look. Big barrel Mondays on the hook, take it home for me to cook. I'm DK, I got something to say. From 
Robinson to BLA. Crazy fisherman from Savannah away. Listen up, y'all, I got something to say. Keep on rocking. Keep on rocking. Friends and family come together. One big mouth and commentary. Keep on rocking. Keep on rocking. Friends and family come together. One big mouth and commentary. Riding down with the motorbike. Ain't going home till I see the moonlight. My name is Davis. They call me Lucy. Making big dust when I'm drifting. One. Three into the four, Bernie and Rango at your door. Chosen on the beat, Toothy on the street. S. Evans, Big T, Charlie, Javis and Noah on the mic. Sonny's out here, he busting the rhyme. DK and Declan trying to get with ya. Don't get it twisted, his name is Sylvester. Throw your hands up now, give it everything. Cause you know he's on the flow like Jaden King. Fire like a cannon, you down with Shannon. Borrow Lula Robinson, you know we ain't tripping. Staying in the game like a sh- Good morning. Welcome back to Urara. Hi, senior students. Hi. Are we, are we on? Are we on? Yes, we're on. Oh. Yeah, we're okay, I'm glad. Welcome. Thursday afternoon, second last session. And so that's a good thing. I know, you're hanging out waiting to hear some jokes. Well, I've got Tobias here with me today because Tobias has actually been telling a few good jokes too. Actually, why don't you start off with your American... Yeah, American B. Okay. Yeah. What, what's it, what, what is it? A USB. <laughs> <laughs> a B from America is called a USB. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got me on that one before. Now, so what's red, Tobias, what's red and shaped like a bucket? What? A red bucket. Oh, dear. <laughs> Tobias, what has ears but can't hear? What? A cornfield. A corn. Okay. I didn't get that one. Well, didn't laugh yet. To it. Corn has, you have an ear of corn. Oh. So you've got a field of corn, so it's all... F- oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. When well, you've got to explain the part. No, well, you asked for the explanation. <laughs> How do you turn a soup into gold? How? Add 24 carrots. Oh, oh very nice. <laughs> okay. What lies at the bottom of the ocean and twitches? What? A nervous wreck. A nervous wreck. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. That was a good one. That was a good Tobias, I used to be, I actually used to be addicted to the hokey pokey. Did you? Thankfully, I turned myself around. Oh, oh. Boom, boom. Saw that one coming. Uh, Tobias, what do you call a sleeping bull? A what? A bulldozer. A bulldozer. A dozer. Okay. What, yeah. what kind of tea is the hardest? What? Reality. <laughs> Why did the tomato blush? Why? It saw the salad dressing. Oh. <laughs> Why did the cookie go to the hospital? Why? It felt crummy. Oh, <laughs> I'm it's I'm fine. Fine. It's Tobias, I try I was in your class earlier today and I tried writing with a broken pencil. It was yeah. pointless. Okay, okay, okay. What's the difference between One a point. Gu- <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference between a guitar and a fish? What? You can't tune a fish. Tuna. Tuna. Oh, oh my head. <laughs> why, do, why do golfers take an extra pair of socks in their golf bag? Why? In case they get a hole in one. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> uh, why do birds fly south for the winter? Why? It's faster than walking. Uh, boom, boom. <laughs> yes, yes, buddy. And what sound do kissing porcupines make? What? Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay, I've got a couple of laughs. Thanks, Wait, Tobias. Yeah. Thank you. I, went, I got some for you now. Okay, oh, you got some for me? Okay, excellent, excellent. Bit yeah. of payback now. Okay. Yeah, um, what kind of songs do fishes listen to? I don't know. Something catchy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, very good. Why do thieves wear blue gloves? I don't know. Why do thieves wear blue gloves? So they wouldn't get caught red-handed. 
Well, well done. done. That was good. That was a good one. Hey, um, what? Pe hang on, hang on, just yeah. people out there on Facebook and ICTV, I hope you're not laughing more at his jokes than you are than you have been on mine. But. <laughs> what do you call an acid with an attitude? I don't know, what do you? Amino acid. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you call a dinosaur with a great vocabulary? I don't know what. A thesaurus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, I, today. you're getting more laughs than I am. Yeah. You, you got more, or is that, or do we leave it at that? I don't know. Okay, let's leave it at that. <laughs> because I'm afraid, well, I've only got 10 minutes, so I've got to do a lesson on alcohol. Now, or do you want to join me on the alcohol lesson? No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, yeah, Tobias. Thank you. Well done, thank you, Let's give a round of applause for Tobias. Oh, I let you hang in. But then he oh. just, then he just, oh, you know, here I was getting a few laughs, and Tobias comes along and gets as many. It is, it is. Okay, let's go. We've we've been looking at alcohol. We've got two more lessons to go, and we don't want to leave it hanging. That um, I guess you could say that. There's no hope, no help. It's either all or nothing in that you drink or you don't drink. We've got to try and work out a way through this so that if you do get to the point of um, being a part, you know, of consuming a lot of alcohol, you're, you're finding that that becomes a part of your life. Um, and hopefully you'll look back on this lesson and remember that... Um, Remember that there is always hope that we can have. So let's have a look at this. Uh, it's titled Breaking the Cycle. And here are some thoughts that I, I put down. If I don't start drinking, I don't need to struggle to stop. I can make a choice for myself like I'll never have more than one drink of alcohol on any day. With help, I can do anything. God can help me. With faith, all things are possible. I'm strong enough to ask for help. Okay, asking for help isn't a sign of weakness, it can be a sign of strength. Alcohol will make me weak, but my culture will restore me. No mixed drinks for me, alcohol does not go with culture. And you might create your own little statement there about, that you might talk about breaking that cycle of, of alcohol's involvement. Um, now look, I put here that giving up alcohol, cigarettes and other drugs is really hard. And it is hard. It's not impossible, but it is hard. Uh, our body gets addicted at what it wants and craves, that, the feeling that it comes from it, and you know, it can be a struggle to stop. But I want you to put here, if you feel like a drink, what are five alternatives that you can reach for or do? You know, what... So rather than having alcohol, what could you do? Rather than even going to a place where there are drinks, what can you do? Put five things in there. And at the end of this page, I put always remember to pray and ask God for help. Because as you'll see, either later today or tomorrow, that historically, that's a major part of being able to break the cycle that comes from addiction to alcohol is that through, either through Alcoholics Anonymous or Teen Challenge or other church-run um, organisations, you'll find that when God gets involved in it and you put your faith in something beyond just trying to do it yourself, that you're actually more likely to succeed. And, and yeah, and I'll, we'll look at some figures on that in a minute. So, look, I just want to make a couple of really important points here. Alcohol is not just an Aboriginal problem. It is not just a white fella problem. Alcohol is a people, a human problem. Maybe because alcohol is everywhere, as we've looked at. You know, it, and at homes and functions and funerals, at births, it is seen as a part of life. The thing that alcohol has been a problem, the thing is that alcohol has been a problem for people forever. In the Bible even, when God looked at the world and was sad that he had made it, he saw Noah as the only good fella, so he rescued him and his family. 
We know the story of building the ark for about a hundred years and rain coming and wiping everyone else out in a flood. Then after floating around for 40 days and nights, the water went down and Noah with the animals got out. But did you know that when he left the ark, he planted a vineyard and the next thing we know he's got drunk and walk, started walking around naked and brought shame to himself and to his sons. So the one good fella makes a stupid decision and it affects his family in a big way. And the Bible verses are there in, in your workbook. And you, know, you might look that up either online or, or hopefully there's a Bible at home to look that up from Genesis chapter 9. A couple of other Bible verses here that I just want you to think about. And even the first one says, what does this mean when Paul writing to the Ephesians says, don't drink too much wine, for many evils lie along that path. Be filled instead with the Holy Spirit and controlled by him. What does that mean? And I want, I, I mean, I could tell you what I think it means, but I want you to write down what you think it means. And um, so both with Noah in Genesis and then this verse in Ephesians, in these two places, what is God saying about drinking and being drunk? So can you fill that out there? Um, okay, we might just, because I know we took up a bit of uh, time with, um, with the jokes there, so we may, no, no, we'll finish this page off and that might do us. Miss Flo's laughing at me back there, but we... Okay, let's look at identity now as we look at breaking the drinking cycle. Where do you get your identity from? We, in a sense, we have two identities, a personal one and a social one. Your social identity is seeing yourself as a part of a group. This might be being part of your family, your community, your skin group, your football team, your class, some other group. It might also be, but you also, these are all part of where you belong to something. Your personal identity is about defining yourself in terms of traits and personal relationships. So this could be you being a son or daughter, an uncle or an aunt, a sister or a brother, a friend, a mother or father, a niece or a nephew. And the thing is that it's like God's put people around us to support us and to help us we have a role as a part of that group and even as an individual. And what I, one of the things I really value about the uh, Indigenous culture is the strength of family and how, you know, I, I guess even me and being adopted into a family, that means that there are, there are people that will call me uncle or brother or father or grandfather. And, so, and with that comes a responsibility to care for them and to support them. And I hope that you can su support one another, uh, particularly if you see people that are, um, that where you, you think alcohol is either has a grip on their life or they're heading down that path towards it, that you would be able to stop them or, or help them to make a stop and to, to walk away from the destruction that that will bring. So look, a couple of things to, to fill out there today. But that might, that'll do us. I hope you had a good, good laugh at the start of that. And you know, Tobias did such a good job with his jokes as well. So we'll be back, be, I'll be back tomorrow for the last lesson. God bless you and see you then.
What's good, senior students? Hey, I did uh, I did Tyson's greeting because he's behind the camera today and I wanted to make him feel special. So you've only got two more lame greetings from me before this is done. So make the most of them. We're back for maths. And again, I've got a special helper today, but before he comes on, I'm going to explain what we're doing. Hopefully he's listening so he knows exactly what we're going to do. But we've been doing um, some work on estimation and measuring and then looking at the error between our estimations and the accurate measurements. And it's been confusing us a lot because it can be a bit of a, um, you've got to get your head around the steps that you need to do for this. But it's one of our activities in our workbook, so I thought it was good if we went over it. So this is what it looks like in your workbook. Um, they ask you there to estimate. So this is, I'm just going to do a quick spin. This one here is you're making a bit of a guess, all right? And some of our guesses were pretty good at guessing. Sometimes we're way off. It's okay. You just make a guess about how at the length of something. Then with an accurate measurement, you actually measure the object. All right. And then the working out, everyone's like, what does that even mean? That's where we do a bit of a sum. Right? A sum. All right, and it's generally a takeaway sum, so you get the bigger number and you take away the smaller number. And then the error means the difference you get in that sum. So the difference. And I'm going to show you with two examples today with my special helper, Keegan, to show you the steps that we take to do this. Are you ready, Keegs? Always. Come on down. All right, cool. So <clears throat> what we're going to do today, <laughs> I've just swapped sides. We're going to, I'm going to get you to guess, like estimate how long you think this feather is from top to bottom. We're going to measure it. We're going to do a sum and work out how much you got wrong. All right? What if I don't get any wrong? Well, I know you and you definitely will. So, <laughs> 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 no, I'm kidding. You're a really okay. good estimator. All right, what do you think? How, how long? I think that is 26 centimetres. I loved how you use units as, of measurement as well. Sometimes people just say 26 and I'm like, what? 26 what? 26 centimetres. All right. How many millimetres is that, flow? 260. Good work. How many metres? Anyway, we're going to keep... <laughs> 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 is it 2,600? Might be. All right, I'm going to do it in this, at this front camera so you can see I'm not lying. Keegan said 26 centimetres. Oh, Keegan, do you want to write your... Your estimation up yep, there? Yep, I can. I've lost. Okay, thank you. All right, so here we go. Let's measure this. I'm going to put this at the... No, I'm going to flip it over. That's on zero. I'll get out of town. 27 centimetres is the accurate measurement, Keegan. Did you measure this before we started? I'm just a really good guesser. Well done. All right, so your estimation was 26. The accurate measurement, I'm going to actually write this, estimation. I guess he is. Guess, guesstimation, that's a cool word, isn't it? Estimation was 26. Ac accurate measurement was 27 centimetres. Not bad. What we do is we choose the bigger number. What's the bigger number, Keggs? Um, gone off uh, with the <laughs> greater than and less than in year 7, 8. Oh, shout out. The crocodile is in the bigger number. Oh, well done, yeah. you were listening. So 27 is the, is the greater number. So we're going to put 27 at the top. We're going to take 26 away. Now, we actually know that 27 take 26, there's just one left over. But for the sake of this exercise, so you know if you have bigger numbers, you're working out you can put in a sum like this. So seven take six is one. one. Two take two is zero. Zero. So the answer is your error. Mm, I'm gonna write here. Error is one centimetre, and that means the difference between your guess and the accurate measurement was one centimetre. So it's pretty good. Your estimation was a pretty good one. All right, we're gonna do one more. Um, I'm gonna. Rub this off. I'll rub it off. Oh, you, okay, you do it. <laughs> and the next thing we're actually going to guess is my iPhone here. All right. Do you want me to guess that one as well? Yes, please. I think, let me have a look. No. Oh, <laughs> I think it is 20 centimetres. 
20 centimetres. Okay. Woohoo. All right. 20 <coughs> centimetres. So if you write that on the board, I will measure it up the front here. There's my. Okay. So I'm going to do it with centimetres because he said 20 centimetres. That's about right there. Ooh. I reckon that's 14.5 centimetres. So your guess was 20 centimetres and the accurate measurement is 14.5. I love how you're laying this out here. Accurate measurement. I'm just going to write accurate M. Yep, perfect. 14.5. Okay, so we've done estimate. This is the accurate. Now we have to do the working out. What is the difference between his guess and the accurate measurement. Which one's the bigger one? Oh, I can see that my estimate's a bit bigger. Mm, a bit bigger. All right, so uh, working out, we're going to do a takeaway sum. We're going to say 20, and I'm going to put a decimal in here because I can see I've got to do this 0.5. Takeaway, 14.5. Let's do this. Now, this is where we get a bit um, confused sometimes in class. Can we do zero, take five? No. No. Nah. I think if we need got, to borrow. We've got to borrow. Can we do zero, take four? Still no. got to borrow. So we go right over here and we borrow from the two. We put one here because we borrowed one and it becomes 10 take four. But we still need to borrow here. So we cross this out and we make it nine. We make this 10. That can be confusing when you've got to do a couple of steps. So 10 take five is five. five. Nine take four? Five. Five. And one take one? Is it five? No, it's zero. <sighs> Keegan, good. I like your self-correction. All right. And then we put our decimal point in here and we can see that the error that was made between your estimation and your accurate measurement is 5.5 and we're working in centimetres so we've got to keep it with centimetres. So not too bad. Not too bad. Maybe that much, hey? That much error. Okay. So that's, um, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to go through that because it gets a bit tricky sometimes. And I just know that Keegan loves the camera, loves maths. So he's up here again. Thank you for, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your help. You're the best. Um, this was our second to last maths lesson. So I hope everyone's, you know, keeping high spirits, even though we're really sad that this is going to be ending. But um, one more tomorrow. We'll make it a fun one. Maybe Keegan will be back here. No, he won't. Can't wait to see you, Keegan. <laughs> All right. Uh, have a good afternoon. See you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>